You don't need to, to push your chips on the table every single day, even if you don't get value tomorrow, for example, on a Tesla or a Netflix or a Facebook or an Apple, whatever the case may be. Don't worry, because a day from now, two days from now, all of a sudden there is going to be a channel. Whether it's going to be long or short, we don't know, right? We can't see in the future, but there is going to be a channel. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Actually, good evening everybody. My God, I hope everybody is doing great. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Traded .com, uh nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. So it, it feels like the NASDAQ 100 is, it was like a lot of us when we were in our uh, early 20s, right? Uh, you know, especially me, you know, I was dating my wife for a while and then finally around 25 or so, I finally got married, right? But it was the it was the commitment issue. I know I know a lot of you guys and girls and everybody in between. Um, th there's a part of us, right? There's really a part of us that we want to commit, right? But a lot of us want to stay independent at the same time. And the, the the Nasdaq 100 is has been trailing the Dow and the and the Russell and the S and P for uh, for quite a while now. And it feels like every single time it's about to go. You know, this is it. Right. This is it. I'm about to go. I'm about to you know, buy a beautiful ring. I want to show you my commitment. I want to show you my love. I want to be with you. OK, I want to be with you till the end of time. And just when you're about to get in the car and you go, ah, you know what? Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. And that's exactly what we're seeing here in technology. And everything was kind of set up for us. Right. If you guys remember going back into last Wednesday, we had two really bullish scenarios. Uh, reclaiming back-to-back -back days of the 50-day moving average. Really, really, really good news, right? I mean, this is so much bullish stuff. Uh, and now we saw going into this week, uh, we saw yields were uh, falling down. Obviously, that's good for uh, technology. Um, so everything we set up, you know, we had Tesla this morning, or actually over the weekend, uh, Kathy Wood, which, you know, I love my Kathy Wood. Um, come out and say, look, by 2025, the stock is worth $3,000. Everything was lined up. The NASDAQ was flying. Uh, technology was going great. And just when you're about to go into the car, right? When you're so excited, I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I'm ready to commit. Da, 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 da. And that's exactly what happened. And unfortunately for bulls, and this is kind of the reality of where we are. You know, here's the commitment levels, right? This whole area here. And every single time we got to the same area over and over and over again, it looks like, you know, it looks like the same movie ending every single time. We were a day away, right? Tesla looked like a monster today, absolute monster. Uh, we caught the dip on Tesla. We caught a good pivot on Tesla. Tesla looked like it was tomorrow was gonna be one day away from reclaiming this whole level. And then Tesla, da 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 da. This is you know this isn't you know this isn't uh, oh my God. What are these lines? You know Tesla just completely got destroyed. I mean absolutely destroyed at the close. When you look for example Netflix, Netflix literally looked like it was one day away, literally one day away from reclaiming this whole area. You know again. Big, big sell off into the close. NVIDIA looked like tomorrow's the day, right? Tomorrow's absolutely the day. This thing sells off $10 in the close. And a lot of times, you know, you sit there and you, you, know, you really concentrate on very, very big macro levels and it starts weighing on you. The only good thing about uh, today's session was very, very seamless. And I really enjoyed today's session was, again, I, had re I really didn't have any, uh, any predetermined notions of what was going to happen today. Uh, I thought we had some really good value uh, this morning. Not a lot. It wasn't one of those days you had 25 pivots, but Tesla was good. Uh, Facebook was good. Some other names, DM, uh, forget the symbol, but uh, I'll show you in a second. So there was some good value today. The, the problem was macro-wise what we didn't see for the follow-through. And the worst possible case 
uh, came towards the close. Okay, we got rejected again at the top of supply. Uh, and if you look at the cues, a lot of these things will mirror, mirror image. I said there was a shot we could get to this uh, 321 level and we got to 320.74 and we got rejected. The absolute worst thing possibly happened. And if you look at today's charts, yeah, you, I mean, you'll find some names that look pretty decent, right? I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll definitely find some names. Let me just give you an idea of kind of what I'm looking at. But, you know, you'll find some names that look pretty decent for, you know, for tomorrow's session. Uh, LUMN, you know, right? Looks looks pretty good, right? You know, you look at LUMN, looks pretty good. So a lot of call buying came in in the name. ILMN, I had, to, I had to say that to myself twice, make sure I wasn't dyslexic. You know, this looks good as well, like a DVAX of the world. You know, this looks pretty good. But when you look at uh, the bigger cap technology names, you're going to be uh, really, really disgusted at what you see. They, they came right back in the range. Even Facebook, who's been the, the absolute strongest name, uh, and there was a really aggressive pivot today. I caught some Facebook also today uh, off that 293 that went to 300. You turn around and you look at it at the close, the stock sold off six, you know, six points into the close. So you're going to find a lot of really beat up technology names. You're going to find a lot of non-technology names that actually look pretty good. But the most important part, and I say this every single day, don't get frustrated. I, I think the worst thing that happened to me, if you guys watch that, um, that video, uh, the weekend video, the first four days of last week was really mentally grueling. It really was just because I had uh, preconceived notions based on uh, my research, what I thought was going to happen, what should have happened. And when it didn't happen, it was incredibly tough mentally uh, to grasp the reality. And, you know, Friday came, uh, uh, Friday came really good value, you know, really salvaged the whole week. And today came some pretty good value as well. But, you know, but I tweeted this out. Um, I, I tweeted this out early in the morning and I said, look, you don't need to trade every day. And that's the, that's the reality. Again, the idea that social media tells you there's hot stocks everywhere. But listen, those hot stocks might be everywhere, but you don't have the advantage of those quote unquote hot stocks. Those hot stocks are not, you know, they're not put into your sweet spot. They're not made for your comfort zone. So how hot can they be or how comfortable can you be trading them if they don't fall into your criteria of what you feel is safe and what you feel uh, is feasible? So, you, you know, you have to remove that whole uh, mental mindset, that whole social and media mindset that every single day is going to be this fantastic opportunity to trade. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But if you trade like, you know, if you've been trading for a long time and you do have your sweet spot, the last thing you want to do is compromise, right? Compromise your mental equity, compromise or prostitute uh, your capital on days that the market for sure is not going to give you that really warm, funny feeling and give you those pair of aces. And today I thought we got dealt a pretty good hand. There was obviously some pretty good value. Like if I'm looking at tomorrow's session, and again, I'm primarily a beta trader, it's going to be very, very tough to look at the market tomorrow, at least definitely from the long side. Uh, on, on the members of the queues and turn around and say, wow, tomorrow's gonna be a rock star day to the upside. I mean, is there gonna be some value? There might be, right? Uh, is there gonna be some channels potentially breaking down uh, from today's levels that got rejected? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think going into tomorrow, um, I'm really you know open-minded on both sides. But the one thing that we continually see over and over again, you don't need to, to push your chips on the table every single day. Even if you don't get value tomorrow, for example, on a Tesla or a Netflix or a Facebook or an Apple, whatever the case may be, don't worry because a day from now, two days from now, all of a sudden there is going to be a channel. Whether it's gonna be long or short, we don't know, right? We can't see in the future, but there is gonna be a channel. Maybe the queues finally you know, make a stand and they finally do commit. Maybe they finally do get into the car and put that ring on the finger and say, listen, honey, I want to be with you all days, right? For the rest of eternity. Until that day comes, we can't anticipate that happening. And we have to kind of see where we are technically. And right now, technically, we got rejected once again off the 50-day moving average. The last time we got rejected off the 50-day moving average was uh, four days ago. And the last couple of times we've gotten rejected, we've sold off. So you can see here, we, you know, 50-day moving average sold off. 50-day moving average sold off, 50-day moving average sold off, 50-day moving average. Hey, maybe tomorrow is different. I don't know. But at least we're getting the evidence 
Uh, we see what we potentially could be pretty good. And look, you have to have some short ideas for tomorrow as well. Like look at this PDD, right? This looks pretty good. They defended that bottom channel today, right? Stock was still down four and a half dollars. It's obviously weak. If it starts confirming, maybe this thing gets hit. Again, you have to have a game plan on both sides. Uh, and by the way, FYI, uh, buyers came in for this thing on uh, the 416 expiration, the 120 puts. So again, there is value to the downside as well but the most important part just wait right settle down wait again you don't need to trade every single day you don't need to uh you know get stressed out because you can't find uh some good opportunities because again the next day or the day after will make you whole and that's very very important that's one of the most important lessons that i did learn from last week that you didn't need to stress for the first four days. Friday came, made us whole, and everything was all good in the world. So it's very, very important to understand that. So going into tomorrow, I mean, look at the indexes. This is something that really you have to pay attention to. Cues, we know where we are. Uh, look at the Russell. The Russell's been very, very strong now. Here's kind of the, the case scenario we, you really have to pay attention for tomorrow. If you notice here, we're looking at now one, two, three, four days in a row that are closing below the five-day moving average. That's not a good thing, right? That's that's really not. It's, again, the five-day moving average is short-term sentiment. If you believe that, like I do, it's short-term sentiment. So you have five days in a row that are closing under the five days. So you have a line in the sand on both sides. If they wake up and start reclaiming 229 on the close, well, that's bullish. If they start reclaiming uh, 223 on a close, well, that's gonna be very, very bearish. So it, that you, you have to be prepared, again, on both sides of the market for what the market is telling you, not the market that you want, but the market you have. If you look at the diamonds, right, the, the market's been very strong. The Dow, the, you know, the financials, uh, they've been super strong, but it's it's showing you another case scenario, just like the, the Russell did, and it has two days in a row of closing below the five-day moving average, and you have this really two day in a row of line in the sand you have 325 it stopped twice right in the diamonds 325 was low from friday 325 was low today if it starts losing 325 and you have two 300 points maybe even 400 points of downside in the on the dow jones industrial average nothing you know nothing ground shaking uh we're not talking about the market going to zero but it, you have to appreciate levels you have to uh once again put yourself in a, in a position of strength instead of guessing, you know, let the price action tell us what's gonna happen. And if the bulls wanna reclaim and the market wants to go higher, then the Dow needs to reclaim uh, 328 on the close. It, it, something has to give here. And that's why, again, you don't need to be super aggressive in tomorrow's session. Even if you have a passive day, but you're reading the market the right way, that's it, that's you doing your job. You're absolutely doing your job. And eventually throughout the week, maybe Tuesday, tomorrow, maybe Wednesday or Thursday, you're going to have a very, very clear path to the goal line. The market's gonna give you a nice, slow, underhanded pitch. And that's when you take a big swing. So it's very, very important to understand so. So uh, let's talk about today's pivots. And we talked about the, the levels uh, this morning. You know, uh, 318 uh, close on the Qs is bullish, right? 309 is bearish. And, and even though, and this is kind of important here, even though the Qs did close over 318, this is kind of like the silver lining in this. Even though they closed over 318, I would have preferred them closing 318, not getting rejected of the 50 day moving average. So you could make a case, well, glass half full, but the fact that we did get rejected off the, of, of the 50 day moving average, it feels like for the 55th time, um, you know, just be a little uh, be a little cautious going into tomorrow's uh, session on the queues. Uh, DMTK, really nice move. Steve uh, called it out today in the webinar. Beautiful move here, 59. Uh, needs to build. And this is a perfect example of non-beta. Uh, 59 needs to build. Here was DMTK. And I, I still like it for tomorrow. I mean, I, it, this chart looks really, really good. Uh, here was DMTK. Got rejected several times here or 59, right? 59, 59. Took out that 59. Took out that 61 and a half and closed. Uh, went as high as the 63. If this thing confirms tomorrow, uh, there is a lot of upside there. Uh, Laser never got to the 32 level. Alibaba never got to the 242 area. Uh, CSTE never got to the 15 area. Uh, AACG, good job for all you guys who did take it. Uh, 550, 570 needs to build. Uh, you know, not a bad move. Not a bad move at all. Um, you know, here is the 550 and it went to uh, 606, right? Not, not a horrible move at all. Uh, Facebook, I caught, uh, this was definitely the strongest stock on the board. Uh, 293 needs to build, right? Here was Facebook. It confirmed that 292.80 level from Friday session, reclaimed the 
all this linear regression line had a really really strong move uh, into the 300 area we're seeing uh, short term uh, 310 320 330 call buyers of the market uh, you know starts reclaiming this is definitely the one uh, who is steering the ship so uh, Facebook was really good as well uh, laser never got there as well uh, I still like this you know I still like they defended this 36 level twice they got it down to like 35 and change I still like this I want to watch it for tomorrow if they start confirming today's price action um, I, I definitely want to I, I definitely want to keep an eye on it uh, FINV never got to nine uh, take on the way up uh, take on the way up and, and, and here's the and here's the, the, the saddest part about this whole equation I said look this you know these stocks are literally a day away I, I, I felt you know Netflix the video before that sell-off so it's really uh, kind of crappy that we did sell off uh, Lumina I like for tomorrow as well I uh, never really had that big build that we really wanted to see but there was again a lot of repeat uh, call buyers coming in on the $15 level uh, Tesla nonstop you know nonstop 800 820 830 call buyers uh, 688 689 I caught this pivot as well uh, it actually traded up to 700 congratulations for you guys a quarter but that pull towards the end of the day uh, correlating with the queues getting rejected was pretty violent they, they took down the stock like $30 along with everything else uh, Facebook 300 on deck and I believe that's it. So, you know, tomorrow, you know, could be a patient day. It really could. Um, I think tomorrow could be one of those scenarios that the market kind of dances around, up, down, up, down, and kind of makes you maybe picks a direction from uh, maybe towards the middle of the week. So the good news is we did reclaim 318. The bad news is we got rejected again at the 50-day moving average. Patience, okay? And you don't need to trade every day. Something has to give. Guys, have a great day. Have a blessed day tomorrow. And God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.